वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला दिस इज श्रावनी असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर सेंट फ्रांसिस कॉलेज फॉर वेमेन हैदराबाद इन दिस पेपर ऑन कंपेरेटिव लिटरेचर ड्रामाज इन इंडिया एंड द कोर्स दैट वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट नाउ इज वुमेन्स थिएटर थियोरी एंड प्लेस दिस मॉड्यूल दैट वी आर लुकिंग इन टू कंप्राइजिस नाथोबोती ओ नाथोबोत by shauli mitro an audio play and writes a note for burning by dina mehta now when we look at this module a uh, comprising this audio play and this full length two act play it is imperative for us to understand the context the socio cultural context from which these two texts surface now if you are used to or you are familiar to the context uh that india was in in 1980s and 1990s you will know of this uh infamous incident of sati roop kanwar the emulation case which happened in 1987 now this triggered this incident this unspeakable horror triggered three types of writing the first was uh, the sort of research on feminist issues and women's issues in contemporary india the second sort of text was uh, the plays and other fictional works on such feminist issues for example um brides are not for burning by dina mehta and the third sort of text that surfaced uh, as a result of this was shauli mitro's nathoboti onathobot and others of its type where there is an reinterpretation of mahabharata and ramayana from a feminist perspective now before we look at nathoboti onathobot by shauli mitro we will start with it uh, let's look at who is shauli mitro now shauli mitro is the daughter of famous bengali thespians and uh, you know group theater personalities shumbhu and tripti mitro uh, following her rich theatrical heritage she got into the stage career uh, at the age of 4 in uh, a play called dosho chakro which was a production of her parents theater group called bohurupi but owing to long spells of uh, health issues uh, around 1978 she chooses not to uh, appear on stage anymore during this period she goes into experimenting about audio plays uh, translating eugene anesco and also looking into a uh, different ways of experimenting with audio plays now in 1982 she comes in touch with the famous book the epoch making book of iravati karves called yuganta Now Yuganta is a reinterpretation of Mahabharata from different perspectives. It's a retelling of sorts. Now Shomhu Mitro when he introduced this book to Shauli Mitro also suggested that she might come up with a play based on this book and Shauli Mitro did. So she looked into the story of draupadi and saw how this empress this princess this mythical character was as much um as much a woman as the thousands of us uh, across culture uh, over all throughout the history she has been manipulated she has been used she has been humiliated she has been downtrodden her entire humanity has been negated in the hands of society and men now before we start uh, looking at the text and the narrative of nathobuti on atbot let's look at the setting of it shaulamitra very interestingly puts 
this entire play um, into the ancient Indian tradition of Kathakata. Now, if you are familiar with the Indian tradition of Kathakata, you will know that in ancient Indian theatre, there has been an instrument of the storyteller, the Sutradhara, the narrator, the Kathak, a man who narrates the stories from Hindu scriptural texts accompanied by music, singing, uh, choric characters and other sorts of accompaniments. Now, what Shaulamitra does is extremely interesting. Shaulamitra changes this entire male centric uh, narration into a female perspectival narration where the storyteller is a woman, Kathak Thakrun, the madam storyteller, who is, of course, Shaulamitra uh, herself. Now, this Kathak Thakrun in of extremely prolific uh, way of narration slips between past and present, between perspectives, between one sort of narration to another sort of narration, all the time empathizing with multiple uh, characters from Mahabharata. It is not that because it's Draupadi's story that the entire way of the entire perspective uh, focuses on Draupadi alone. Now, if you look at the image of Kathak Thakrun, you will see how Shaulamitra does not dress in a very traditional Bengali, the linguistic community that she came from, a uh, Bengali uh, woman. She dresses uh, in a different way, which is in a way uh, cross-cultural. She pleats her sari differently. She wears uh, Orissa style nose rings. She wears different sort of silver jewelry. And she speaks with gestures which uh, posits her as a cross cultural Indian woman who is speaking of another woman and her predicament. Now, um, if you are familiar with the Pandavani tradition of uh, Chhattisgarh, you will know of Tijanbai. Now, Pandavani tradition, very similar to Kathakata, actually it's another offshoot of Kathakata, is actually uh, from the state of Chhattisgarh, uh, where people speak about, narrate the story of Pandavas, as the name suggests, and the story of Mahabharata. Now, there are two sub-traditions in this Pandavani tradition. The first is the Vedamati tradition which is less popular. The other is the Kapalik tradition which is followed by Tijanbai which is more vibrant in a way. She dances, she sings, she occupies the entire stage and she is accompanied by her chorus characters who help her uh, to portray the situations, the episodes from Mahabharata most uh, prolifically. Now coming back to Nathabuti on Adbot, the narration of it, Shaoli Mitro starts Nathabuti on Adbot in an in a very interestingly rustic Bengali accent where she first introduces herself and she welcomes the audience and she also introduces her topic of the day that is the story of Draupadi. Draupadi the empress, Draupadi the princess, Draupadi the wronged wife. Now Nathopati Onathbot is roughly translated as the orphaned wife or as Nobunita Debsen translates it as five lots yet none the protector. Now Draupadi is with five husbands yet she is protected by none of them. Uh, she starts the narration from 
Draupadi's Swayamvara where she falls in love with Arjuna and she deliberately chooses to lead a life of poverty and deprivation as Arjuna's wife who she mistakes to be a poor Brahmin. And then she jumps, there is a narrative jump to uh, the perspective of Kunti where Kunti chooses to let her marry all of her five sons because she realizes that all of her five sons are lusting after Draupadi and if only one marries her then the others might develop a sort of fraternal discord. She also suggests, Shaulimitra also suggests that Kunti looks at Draupadi, she is touched by this helpless young innocent child and for a second her heart melts but she also recognizes that if Draupadi marries only one of her sons, her sons will never be united enough to get their kingdom back. It is a political alliance and Draupadi uh, is a political pawn. She is the political currency over here. So she washes her hand of this entire business and she asks Yudhishthira to make the decision and Yudhishthira accepts this proposition. There is a narrative jump again and it comes to the gambling episode which Shaulimitro, Iravati Karve and everybody else kind of uh, considers as the focal point around which the story of Mahabharata changes its course. Now before getting into the swayam, uh, that uh, gambling sequence, um, Shaulimitra Mitra also talks about where Draupadi is remembering this small harmless episode where in the palace of illusions Yudhishthira uh, uh, objects where Duryodhana is humiliated. Now, Draupadi remembers it as a harmless episode where Draupadi laughed out at uh, Duryodhana's um, lapse, but it in a way provokes Duryodhana to orchestrate the entire gambling, uh, uh, gambling scenario. In the gambling, Duryodhana who is still angry about the, his humiliation in the palace of illusions, he provokes Shakuni, his uncle, to beggar the Pandavas and humiliate them in the worst way possible. And Yudhishthira, going against his honorific title, the Dharmaraj, does things which are not exactly following the Hindu scriptural uh, code of conduct. He gambles. And he gambles away his uh, land, his kingdom, his brothers, himself and finally his wife. As Draupadi is dragged in the open court by scantily dressed and menstruating, she screams for help. She also uh, asks uh, Yudhishthira that if Yudhishthira has already lost his freedom, how can he uh, retain his ownership of Draupadi and in that case how can he actually bet Draupadi in the gambling. Now Iravati Karve finds this episode a tactical mistake in Draupadi's part because she says that in those days even a slave with no freedom could have ownership on her on their the, on their women folk. So even if Yudhishthira had lost his freedom, that doesn't stop him owning uh, Draupadi. But Shaulimitra, thankfully, does not really follow this sort of argument, and uh, she also uh, commends. Draupadi's um, way of going against uh, the tide and trying to defend her honour. She also says how Karna's suggestive words disturbs her further. She has nowhere else to go and uh, Draupadi now can only 
scream for help but nobody answers as if the entire court has lost their tongue lost their voice now shauli mitro also comments how draupadi refuses to surrender her dignity and to fall and beg for mercy she does not she protests and draupadi also um, accuses everybody present of adharma now shauli mitro also says that uh, probably the supernatural help from krishna never comes it was uh, dhritarashtra who stopped this entire sordid episode because he was very scared of public outrage but draupadi uh, was saved by none protected by none it is also suggested that bhima tried to punish dhishthira because of his uh, compliance to this entire gambling scenario but arjuna stops him by mouthing empty words of honor and duty this is not the end for draupadi's humiliation during their uh, agyatavasa during their time of exile in uh, disguise she is uh, harassed and molested by uh, kichaka the general and brother in law of the king uh, uh, to whom they were offering their service bhima is the only one who saves her by killing kichaka most gruesomely this enrages draupadi more and the end of this exile she practically eggs her husbands for a dharma yuddha a justice war but when this justice war actually happens it is not for her honor it's the honor for the five pandavas and she loses everything and she loses her sense when all of her five sons lose their life they are brutally murdered and unlawfully so as the pandavas prepare to leave in their last journey towards heaven draupadi drops first in suffering and misery and when the other brothers ask yudhishthira that why would an honor honorable and virtuous woman like draupadi fall the first in this journey yudhishthira says because draupadi always loved arjuna more though she was married to all of them and would have should have loved them equally draupadi overhearing these words realizes that whatever yudhishthira has done was out of spite and she forgives him and feels sorry as she lies dying she remembers the few moments of happiness that there was in her life and she ultimately realizes that it was only bhima who loved her selflessly as she lies dying bhima drags himself and tries to comfort her last moments nathoputi anathobot ends by saying how this misery for a woman is perpetual it is always there it's eternal over history irrespective of the culture that the woman comes from can we stop the second text now that we are looking at is deena mehta's brides are not for burning as the name suggests the play in two acts is on a bride immolation the story centers the a uh, demarcation and the marginalization of women in our society the story uh, concerns the death of a young woman called lakshmi and how her brothers and brother and sister go around looking for justice and they are refused justice in every quarters now let's have a look at who is Dina Mehta Dina Mehta is an Indian Parsi playwright she talks about the women issues that we were speaking um, about a little earlier in this module now she has written several short stories along with several plays and a novel titled and some take a lover 
the novel centers on a proposed intercaste marriage but brides are not for burning has been immensely popular her first full length play the myth makers won the sultan padamsi playwriting competition and tiger tiger which was based on the life of tipu sultan won wide critical acclaim she often uh, brings out the parochial narrow mindedness in different metropolis including mumbai her play getting away with murder deals with childhood trauma sexual abuse infidelity and insecure relationships in modern urban spaces this is dina mehta now let's talk about the set design and the stage directions of the play now dina mehta makes different sets uh, for the two act plays there will be one uh, portion of the stage which will act as the decide tenement room which is poor which is grimy and which is very grim least pass the second is sanjay's very plush and opulent living room the third is tarala's kitchen the fourth is vinod's office and the fifth is uh, lakshmi's in-laws living cum dining room which is richly but garishly uh, decorated now of the two acts and in the first act the first two scenes will be happening in the desai tenement room the third scene will be uh, staged in sanjay's living room in the second act if you see the first and the last scene will be in again the desai tenement room and the second third and fourth scenes consecutively will be occurring in vinod's office tarala's kitchen and the in-laws uh, dining uh, living cum dining room now if we look at the stage direction dina mehta is not exactly very particular about stage direction she gives a uh, uh, cues for laughter for uh, facial expressions uh, for gestures but other than the last uh, moment of tenuma there is no important stage direction as such in uh, the play now the story starts with uh, anil and malini a brother and a sister and their almost senile father mr desai who are, are talking about their elder sister lakshmi's horrific accidental death she has burned to death and malini and anil are very disappointed that they did not get any justice from anybody lakshmi uh, lakshmi's death malini believes is not accidental but a dowry death because lakshmi's old neighbor and friend tarla had kind of hinted to malini that a uh, lakshmi's in-laws were present during her death but did not do anything roy malini's uh, acquaintance comes and sexually harasses her and also asks her to join him in his political revolution in the second scene dr palakar who is anil's old professor comes in to warn anil about malini who he thinks is a um, uh, consorting with politically undesirable people accidentally he also lets anil know that he is acquainted with the doctor who attended lakshmi in her deathbed but incidentally this doctor was only called 3 and 1/2 hours after lakshmi's uh, uh lakshmi's accident um so anil goes in search of malini's suitcases and boxes and finds political manifestos which kind of disturbs him and he resolves that he will be doing 
something about his elder sister's demise and also something about Malini's undesirable political connections. In the third scene, Malini comes to her boyfriend Sanjay's uh, um, house and she is propositioned by Sanjay who assures her that he finds her attractive but will never find her good enough to marry. Malini submits to Sanjay out of uh, disappointment and self-disgust. But incidentally, Malini also gets to know from Sanjay that Vinod, Lakshmi's husband, had reinstated Tarla's husband into uh, his job so that he could exploit Tarla's uh, witness in uh, regarding Lakshmi's death. In the second act, um, Anil and Malini are trying to resolve this truth, this horrific truth about Lakshmi's death. And uh, it is the news comes in that Dr. Palakar has been attacked by the politically undesirable revolutionaries and he has been killed. Anil is disturbed and he resolves to do something about Lakshmi's death and Malini also resolves to go her own way to look into the truth of Lakshmi's death. In the second scene, uh, Anil goes to confront Lakshmi's husband uh, Vinod and accuses him of being complicit at Lakshmi's death in order to gain Lakshmi's life insurance money. Now, Vinod uh, accuses, uh, denies all these accusations vehemently, but he also tries to bribe Anil uh, into silence. Anil leaves. In the third scene, now Malini goes to uh, Tarala's house and tries to get the information about the truth about Lakshmi's death from Tarla. Tarla lets slip that Lakshmi was systematically harassed by her in-laws for dowry and for not having any children and out of desperation she tried to immolate herself. Her in-laws did not stop her because they wanted her out of the way so that they could claim her life insurance money. Uh, Lakshmi's in-law, mother-in-law overhears it and threatens Tarla into silence. In the next scene, uh, Malini goes to Lakshmi's in-law's place and bribes uh, Vinod's brother Arjun and their servant Kallu into getting the information out and uh, the information that he she gleans from them uh, concurs with uh, Tarla's account that Malini or uh, Lakshmi had closed herself, locked herself up in a room and tried to immolate herself and even when they could break the door and attack uh, and stop Lakshmi from hurting herself, they did not do so. In the final scene, Anil and Laksh uh, Malini realize uh, that they will never get justice from this system which has been corrupted uh, from the very start and they have been bribed into silence by Vinod's uh, rich family. Roy comes to force Malini to come with him to assist him in his political agenda. Malini says that no political change will ever help the society unless the society changes from within. Roy and Malini face each other and we see how Malini's shadow overpass Roy's. Now let's look at the important themes that the, uh, this play uh, comes up with. The first thing of course is the gender demarcation. Dina Mehta shows how every second women are being uh, ostracized from the society. The society will never really speak anything about the women. Uh, throughout the play, we see how Lakshmi 
first was manipulated by her family because after her mother's death she had to leave her studies to take care of her family and her young brother and sister and later she was married off to a rich family because uh, her father wanted to preserve the family honor and fortune then it is also hinted how the father uh, abandoned her for his first wife because she could not present him with children and he had also uh, 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 he had also maritally raped his second wife occasionally malini is uh, sexually harassed by both sanjay and roy and her brother who is her staunchest ally also tries to curb her political aspirations secondly is the theme of corruption anil and malini never get justice for lakshmi they know it because uh, the judiciary is corrupted and the judiciary is sold to the rich the vinod's family they have successfully uh, bribed the judiciary secondly it is also mentioned how sanjay's um business is not uh, entirely legal it is also hinted that tarla's husband was incompetent but he was reinstated in his job so that tarla's witness could be manipulated uh, arjun and vinod's servant kallu is uh, bribed into silence by vinod's family as well so in these two texts we see that women's predicament in our society it has not changed over the centuries things have happened in the hovel and in the palace palace alike all it is needed is for the for the society to recognize uh, the evils the social evils that there is and to be aware of the ways to change it so to look back in this entire module what we have learned in this module is first that in uh, the early uh, 90s uh, and the entire 80s there has been an upspringing of feminist texts and two of the texts that we looked into summarizes how some of the social evils like a uh, bride emulation about sexual harassment about the reassessment and uh, reinterpretation of epics uh, happened during uh, these 20 years and the tradition continues later we looked into shaulamitra's famous audio play nathubuti onathbot where shaulamitra as the madam storyteller tells us the story of draupadi the empress who is who has five lords but is protected by none later in dina mehta's two act play brides are not for burning we look into the a uh, sad death of uh, a young woman called lakshmi and the disappointment of her siblings when they are looking for justice because the judiciary is entirely corrupted now for further reference you can look into the e text that is available to you there are also texts which you can refer for extra information in the learn more sections and there is another section for self assessments with multiple choice questions and some essay type questions